our next speaker. A goodie, a favorite on the circuit. Mr. Dan Bogos from CG Rates. Why do I have to be the... Why do you have to be where? After David, it was so hard to, to cope it's, with it's his skin level. Up. I know. <laughs> do you want the chocolate stuff? <laughs> Actually, I cannot gonna, actually throw that well like you do. So. Don't worry about it. He's going to pet people with chocolates if they try to fall asleep. <laughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> Does this work? Or? I hear you. You hear me? But yep. Do well, you guys... Well, 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 well. That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> okay. You have a display? In theory, yes. But sometimes I need to re reboot. Like we, ah, it does something. About 25 minutes straight, like on a dot. Okay. It shows me that it's coupled, but do we need to sync something? No. Video so far, so good, right? No, we don't hear. We don't get any signal. No, can you change? Can you change video mode? No. Okay. So something is happening. Oops. So I want to give you guys an update on uh, our final presentation oh, yeah. today. Much better. Huh? Um, okay, there was the a request <laughs> to uh, get some info on Shaken. What is it? No, Steer and Shaken. And uh, Botcon has volunteered to cover some of the info on that topic. However, he feels that it's not enough for a full segment. So in lieu of that, we're going to have Libby showing us some um, CLI debugging with the new CLI tool. As the, no? Memory. Maybe? Maybe? No, memory leaking debug. Ah, uh, memory leaking debug with something yeah. that just happened to me. I, my memory leaked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're ready. Only. Excellent work. OK, so Dan's going to be talking about, to us about fraud mitigation using traffic pattern monitoring with CG rates. Thank you. So thank you guys for, for having us here and um, for, for organizing such a wonderful event once again. So um, like I, just to continue what, what David said, I'm very proud I finished my presentation yesterday afternoon, so not yesterday night. So okay. <laughs> I, ca I came very well prepared this time. Um, so about the company. Um, we are a company located in, in Germany, in Bavaria, close to uh, where Oktoberfest is, is going on. This is kind of sometimes our uh, working environment. And um, we are specialized of uh, architecting server-side solutions in VoIP environment. Um, we, we have uh, quite some experience over there. Uh, we have done both wholesale as well as retail before. And we kind of understand by now what means uh, live system, system outages. So we, we try to uh, avoid them as much as possible. Uh, CG Rates, uh, CG Rates as, a, as a project came out of uh, our need of uh, providing a solution on top of um, already um, open source uh, components which we were using there. And after digging a bit in, in open source world, um, we found out that uh, it doesn't really uh, exist uh, a project uh, similar to what we are looking for. So we decided that we develop one. And that happened uh, in 2010. Um, so uh, the idea was to, to be able to, uh, to be fast enough to cope with uh, the, the online charging requirements and also to be uh, feature rich and reliable. So this is how CG rates came up. Um, what, what CG rates? Uh, it's, uh, we we co kind of combine uh, a series of terms. So it's, it's online or real time. It's very customizable. So it's, we call it enterprise. And it's a billing suite. So it's not really a billing server. Uh, we miss 
some components, but we miss it on purpose. So we are not doing invoicing nor uh, doing web interface. It's all API based and um, it's not only rating, but it's a serious uh, a series of, of components. Uh, it's, it should be easily pluggable into existing infrastructure. So um, if you already have a billing uh, system out there and you just uh, want to upgrade your may maybe your, your performance, uh, it should be uh, able to accommodate that. And it should be also able to, to allow you bringing uh, new components in the future in your network because um, it's, it's all API based and it's easy to add like translator be between your components and CGRATE infrastructure. And it's also non-intrusive into existing setup. So we don't um, like uh, force you to, to route your traffic through a specific switch just to, to have your, your billing done. Um, CGRATE talks to, to your uh, switch, exchange information exchanges information and then you are the one in power to decide whether you use this information or not in your in your routing decision. It's all open source. Um, full sources is, are available on GitHub. We don't have any add-ons in private repositories and we, we really have consideration for community contributions. So we, we encourage you to, to come and come up with your ideas, your problems, your I don't know your your dark secrets. Anything uh, we are we are there to to listen. Um, performance oriented. So uh, as I told you, this was one of our first requirements, and uh, we kind of uh, achieved that. Um, we for that we have we had to come up with uh, a, a smart caching system. Uh, this works for us as a database layer. So it it always uh, caches the data. Uh, sometimes on the fly, sometimes uh, on demand, and uh, some, sometimes on uh, based on configuration on load, load time and um, on on start time, and then um, you, it, it will stay in the cache again uh, based on your own configuration. So um, we also have support for uh, LRU. Uh, this uh, list record used, so you you can uh, decide that your cache uh, has a, s a certain size, and then uh, as soon as the size is reached, then it will start kicking out um, objects which are not in use or which which are least used. And you also can configure uh, TTL, so uh, your your data in the cache can expire automatically. Uh, from the first access time or from, from the last access time. Um, all the pro processing is done asynchronously, so it's very hard to, to uh, get CG rates uh, blocked, at least blocked completely. If you, if you ever get a, a block, it will be per your account per, or per call because um, we, we lock or we make sure that um, uh, we, we execute secure uh, actions on accounts. Then um, the, the whole pro uh, uh, software is test driven. So um, we, we have over uh, 5,000 tests uh, today. We have various unit tests, integration tests, call simulation tests. So we perform a lot of testing. This is also why we, uh, we can uh, claim that our ma master should be the, almost the, the most stable <coughs> version which you can get from us because it's always the, the, the less, what happened? Okay, uh, the, the, um, the, the most uh, tested and the, the, this is where we fix the problem. Um, it has a modular architecture, so uh, it should be cloud ready if you are going towards a, a cloud architecture. Um, it's, it's based on microservices with uh, a rich set of uh, APIs so uh, all, all our components talk between themselves via APIs. This can happen in process if you want to optimize the, the speed or between processes so you can separate the processes uh, based on your needs of scalability. So if you see that uh, a, a certain component is uh, taking a lot of CPU and you want to, to give it more power, then you can move that 
outside of, of the process and still uh, don't feel uh, any problem uh, architecturally uh, speaking. Uh, if you want to enhance components, it's also easy because, as I told you, they, they all follow something like um, uh, five APIs each. So it's, it's not uh, that uh, of a challenge to replace something. Um, it's uh, a, a feature-rich uh, software. So we got what others are calling uh, online charging system. We also have support for offline charging system. If you are in, in wholesale and you, you need more performance, then you can go with, with offline. Uh, we, we are multi-tenant, so you can uh, partition your, your system with multiple um, uh, tenants on it. Then uh, we have uh, the, the original uh, component, which is the rating engine. Uh, this one had support for derived charging. Uh, this derived charging, it's, it's pretty wanted because it offers you the possibility to um, calculate multiple prices for the same CDR. So you can have your supplier pricing, your distributor prices, your, your um, customer prices, all based on the same CDR. And they will show up like uh, in separate charges <laughs> and they can also be calculated in real time in emulated sessions, each with their own um, billing <coughs> logic. Um, account balances, so we support, um, actually this was one of our uh, top priority in retail. So we have all sorts of bundles, combinations, uh, actually unlimited bundle combinations with um, uh, fallbacks. So during a call, you can use multiple balances, uh, data, SMS, uh, money, and so, so on. And um, to the, to the uh, balances, we have the, the session management and event charging, so you can do balance reservation and refunds uh, if, if you have reserved too much during the session and so on. Uh, CDR logging, so uh, CDR server with support for interim records. Um, this is especially useful if you, if you are using DB flat file for, of OpenSIPs. Then um, fraud detection with automatic mitigation, which I will, I will talk about today, LCR, LCR with, with uh, QoS, so on top of quality LCR, we have uh, monetary LCR, then you have um, LCR on top of bundles, LCR based on pattern and so on. So there are all sorts of uh, strategies of LCR which you can uh, use uh, inside or within our LCR profiles. Call statistics with pattern monitoring, again, um, you can monitor any kind of um, uh, metrics in your network, uh, like ASR, ACD, and they are all in memory, so they are, they are very fast. Um, we have also uh, diameter and radius uh, server implementation, especially, especially diameter, it, it starts being popular due to uh, 4G, 5G, whatever number of Gs um, out there. And we also have implemented in a standard agnostic way, so you define your templates and then uh, you define what attributes you, you take from diameter and what attributes you put back. And then in this way, you, you can follow up any standards out there because uh, the diameter interfaces are based on this attribute values which you process or return back. Uh, we have also resource allocation controllers, so you can monitor channels per user, per destination, per time, whatever you want. Again, all in memory, fast. Uh, Built-in high availability and dynamic partitioning support. So we have re recently added a dispatcher, which can give you um, uh, scalability. And um, we are also agile in uh, developing new features. So we like uh, developing uh, stuff. Um, this is a, a, a history. I always like to, sh to show it because it's also our um, proof that we, we didn't sleep for last year. So uh, since 2013, when we started developing, we, we never stopped. So you, you cannot find any month where we stop uh, pushing commits. And that's already since, uh, you see, since uh, eight years. So uh, we started in 2010, but since 2013, since six years, we are, we are seriously pushing out. 
So uh, our code base reached about uh, 220,000 lines of code in Go, which is a compressed language, so it's, it, it offers quite some functionality <laughs> inside. Um, this is just a, an, an architectural or a possible uh, architecture um, setup which you can do. Uh, of course, uh, since the system is so flexible, you can decide how you want to organize your network. So you are in charge of how you design your network. But this is just an example. So you can have the, the what we call agents, uh, which are here on the on the bottom of the of the slide. I hope you guys from from back you can see it. Um, in case of OpenSIPs, uh, thanks to the to the wonderful module which uh, OpenSIP developers did. Uh, it's, it's all built in OpenSIPs, so you call natively uh, CGRATE uh, APIs from uh, within your OpenSIP script. Uh, and this one, these uh, APIs are going to our session component, and from there they are translated towards internal uh, CGRATE infrastructure. Uh, they are, the CDRs, for example, are pushed here. Uh, the, the CDRs can also be um, uh, received from other uh, components like the, the DB flat file, for example, and uh, they can be pushed towards other subsystems of CGRATE, which uh, we, we have quite quite some of them, each with, with their uh, uh, well-designated purpose. And then in the end, uh, you, you can detect uh, various thresholds, you can you can react on them, so you can inform your, your own notification server or your, your uh, knock and so on. You can do online exports. This is useful because if you already have a billing system and you have CDRs in specific format, you can use CGRATE to receive um, CDRs in real time from, from CGRATE already rated. So it looks like they are coming from OpenSIPs, but instead they are coming from CGRATE. It's a few milliseconds delay and we, we tag all your CDRs with prices already. So you get, it, it, it feels like you're getting the CDRs already rated from OpenSIPS itself, which is kind of useful because you don't need to modify that much in your, in your uh, network and infrastructure. Uh, in, for OpenSIPS, uh, we have uh, the two ways of integrating. Uh, the, the old, prior to 2.3, we had some, uh, um, implementation via REST client, M M MI uh, data datagram, and DB flat store. And then uh, after 2.3, we have this uh, native CGRATE module in, uh, in OpenSIP. Uh, the, the module will call APIs. So JSON RPC APIs, you can always monitor the, the uh, communication between CGRATE and OpenSIP, so it's all done transparently. You just need to sniff uh, with ngrep uh, the, the port, and then you see uh, what's going on. Uh, now coming to, to fraud mitigation, um, it, we, we have implemented in, in multiple places uh, in CGRATE, and uh, depending on your own needs, you can use one or another. So first of all, it's, it's part of our accounting. Uh, it sits together with uh, accounts and balances. So as soon as your, your balance changes, the, uh, the thresholds are also checked, and it can, we can react there. So we can, as actions, we can call actions as soon as, as the thresholds are hit, and then um, these actions are tightly integrated because uh, the, the actions are executed while the, the account is, is locked. So this offers us um, the, the, the possibility to, for example, if, you, if we detect fraud, to disable it so no other call, if you have simultaneous calls for the same account, uh, no other call will be possible even after. So uh, by, by doing this way, uh, you can uh, reach, like uh, if you have 1,000 simultaneous calls and you detect fraud and you have active debits, uh, you can reach instant disconnection for all 1,000 calls as soon as you detect the fraud which is, uh, it gives you the, the, uh, the ability to control your calls in real time. Um, you can monitor their uh, minimum or maximum balance and uh, counter for usage, for example, minutes to destination or uh, minutes combined with uh, specific time uh, and so on. Then we have also uh, ability to, to monitor resource usage. So you can say if my resources, so if, if uh, channels are um, 
uh, too high in the night, then something is, is not right, too high for a customer, too high for, too high for a destination, or a customer calling a destination in the middle of the night is also not normal. Um, part of the stats, so you can monitor here the patterns, which I, I, um, I uh, it's also the uh, subject of my talk. In the stats, you can uh, say that I want my average call duration for uh, between five and six to be uh, three minutes. If it's higher or lower, I want to be notified because something is not right, uh, or or uh, average success ratio, or uh, total call cost average call cost and uh, other metrics which you, you want to do. Uh, we, we also are able to monitor the sessions in real time. So if, um, I don't know, from, from law enforcement, they are asking you to, uh, to tell them when a customer or when, when someone is dialing a specific uh, flagged number, you can use the, the uh, sessions and monitor the sessions in real time to, to trigger an event. Okay, someone has just dialed this number. And this is, uh, again, via uh, the threshold monitoring. Also, you can monitor the, the calls within CDRs. So uh, uh, as soon as uh, a, a number or an event happens via CDRs, you can react again there. Um, this is an example of, of uh, processing logic within accounts. So uh, here, the, the call setup, um, that we lock the account within process, uh, we do operations on account, and then we check the thresholds. If a threshold was hit, we execute all the actions, so this can be a set of them. For example, we disable first the account, then we, we post the account uh, data, then we email to your NOC, and so on. Uh, we save back the account, which is already disabled, and we unlock it within the process. So the next request standing in line to get the lock will find the account already locked, so, uh, already disabled. So new setups or new reservations are, are not longer possible. Um, thresholds, it's, it's like uh, the, the advanced functionality which we have built <coughs> after the, the accounts uh, based action triggers. And this one, uh, it's, it's more generic. So um, it's, it's designed to monitor and react on event uh, values. So uh, this is also, we consider it as, as our uh, network monitoring system within CGRATES. Uh, it's a standalone, which means you can use it outside of CGRATES as well. It's just about setting some thresholds and uh, setting some actions. Uh, when the threshold is hit, uh, we, we call the actions. That, that's as simple as it gets. The, the events themselves, uh, they are generic, so we are able to, to, to process any kind of hash maps. You don't need to, to send a specific format of event, and this is also why we can use it in many places, because we can fit then hash maps from everywhere. It's internally or remotely accessible, as I told you, via RPC. It's performance-oriented, it's all in memory, like uh, everything we do, uh, and it's using filters as access list. Filters is another subsystem of CG rates, which is um, kind of common for all the others, and uh, it's, it's easy to define various types of filters there. Um, it's, um, as, as type of filters, you can see uh, string matching, like full string, prefix, uh, greater or less <laughs> than, uh, part of destination file, part of timings, or RSR. The RSR are regips, so you can um, uh, match based on regips as well. Of course, regips will be always slower than the string and prefix. String and prefixes are also indexed. Uh, we have tested our filters against some uh, number portability system which we have implemented, and uh, it was easily uh, uh, like working re in real time with 20 million numbers, which is the, the size of ported uh, porting database of uh, Netherlands here. Um, so we, we are able to uh, monitor multiple values within a threshold instance, and uh, we have false negative pr uh, protection, like minimum items which needs to occur or to match in order to trigger the actions. Uh, we have also action floating protection. We, have, we can say maximum hits which needs to happen before we disable the threshold. 
uh, and also we can say a minimum slip between executing actions. So if someone is flooding us with events, we can filter them out and only call actions from time to time. So we don't like uh, react on all of them. Uh, we also are able to uh, back up the data in offline storage so you, it can survive restarts. When, when um, on match, there will be actions executed. Uh, you can define, as I told, a set of actions to be executed and um, th they can be both synchronous, which means we wait until we call another or asynchronous, like we call very fast. Um, this is a, an, an API uh, showing how you can set a threshold uh, profile. You can use both CSV if you want to do like bulk setting or you can call APIs for setting threshold profile. You see, uh, you, you, you attach your threshold to a tenant, you attach some filters. Filters, use, uh, these are inline filters, but you can also define them separately in a common format. Uh, this, this filter, for example, says that the, the balance ID should match default and uh, the units in the event should be greater than 12. So it's completely <laughs> generic and it's just matching your event. So it's, it's one to one. Uh, this is why we don't expect to have a format because the, the, the matching is done within filters. Uh, you can say an ex activation interval for your rule and you can say maximum or, or minimum hits, uh, all this which I explained you about. And as soon as this, uh, this hits are, are happening, then you can, these actions will be called. In this case, will be a disable account and inform knock uh, level. Uh, some, some example of uh, processing events, this is an account update which tells whether the, the account was um, um, flapping or was disabled and here it, it shows the thresholds which were hit and this is a balance update which tells that a balance was changed and this is the new <coughs> units and again you can monitor this and uh, this is resource telling that uh, on this resource ID we have hit 101 channels and a session initiation it contains some other information for monitoring real-time sessions and um, a CDR CDR is more complex depending on what you put inside because it's your decision what you what you put inside and you can monitor that as well stats update for monitoring real-time stats happening uh, for example, here, this, this is again the dynamic information, but you can see your average call duration, your average success ratio, total call duration, PDD, uh, sum. We, we also have uh, some generic metrics, so sum of account or average of extra field one. So all these are, are happening in another subsystem in stats. Uh, some use cases. Uh, when, when, when the money uh, goes below uh, two euro for an account, uh, disable an account when there is a top up higher than expected. So when, when higher than 100 euro, we can disable it. So that's the opposite. Nobody would expect that if they, they hack a, a credit card, we will detect that and disable the account because they top up too much. They are greedy. <coughs> uh, or inform the support when, when cost on Cuba destination gets higher than, than 50 euro in one hour. Uh, escalate notifications when cost on Cuba gets higher than, than uh, 75 in one hour and so on. Or monitoring stats, inform customer when his total call cost is higher than uh, uh, 75 euros for premium numbers. Uh, disable customer account if he dies more than three numbers to Somalia destination. All these are, are uh, unregular patterns. Warn if customer is having no other traffic than suspicion prefix in the last day. Uh, resources warn if customer is using more than two channels during off-peak hours. It's another example. Uh, disable customer if using more than one channel on Latvia and Estonia. So um, the, the, your creati creativity is in the end what, what can set the, the threshold rules. The, the, the most important is that you understand that there is no uh, certain uh, things which you can monitor, but what your experience will give you the protection you need. As, as more experience you have, as more things you can implement uh, within CG rates. And um, like uh, 
monitoring also sessions and CDRs. And uh, I, I made it in time, like <laughs> in a bit rush. It's a, it's a lot of content I know, so it could be that, like David says, I lost you somewhere in between, but I hope you'll <laughs> review the video because it's on YouTube. <laughs> Wow, thank you, Dan. Thank you. So do we have any uh, any questions for Dan? Let's see those hands. I'm going to go over here because he's closer. So you mentioned about caching using micro-threads. What does micro-thread mean in this context? A uh, micro-thread is what, what Golang came up with on top of system thread. So they are using the, the, the goal environment will, will create dynamically the, the system threads and store all our uh, asynchronous stuff in micro threads. Uh, the, the advantage is that you can end up with millions of micro threads mm -hmm. in just thousands of system threads and then you are not kicked out by, by the operating system that you are using too many threads. So it's a goal specific implementation? Yes. Uh, apart from uh, fraud mitigation and fraud pre prevention, what kind, uh, generically speaking, uh, of uh, statistics uh, and uh, aggregation uh, you saw is the most useful uh, to have uh, business intelligence from uh, CDRs? Yeah, so our experience is that uh, we are always going too much in theory with the real rules but in practical, the, the user or, or our customer will simply monitor balance. And they will set up accounts, even if they have postpaid accounts, they will set them up as prepaid, but with a certain daily limit. So because their customers accept that, that they are protected. So they will never use or never be hacked more than 1,000 euros in a day. So they kind of are secure from this way. So that's a common way of doing it. And simple. Yes, please. I saw on your uh, last slide there, I think it was that you put like suspicious destinations, uh, like in Mali, I think, yeah. that here in Estonia. I just wondered if there was, say, a, a thousand suspicious destinations in the world out there, which you know, probably isn't an unrealistic assessment. How easy is it to add uh, the rules? So you, you know, it's a, it's an API provide, call. Do you provide a, a database of suspicious uh, destinations? No, because we, we are just we are providing you just the tool. You you should gather the data, like doing your honey spots or finding this data online or buying from somewhere. And the, what we we offer is the tool to import easily your destination within Segurate. So it's API call or C, CSV upload in a in a specific let's say blacklist destination uh, ID, and then you put all the prefix in the world there. So. Okay. I'm going to get Lorenzo up here and move in. Dan, thank you again. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you very much.